back on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday so we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about all the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all the other fun explody hungover type new... Yeah, it's the first, first show of 2020, and we're all surprisingly hydrated, including myself, Vince Stone. That is Jordan Swing, and uh, we have one Pedro Mateus, also hydrated yeah. on the island of Britannia, <laughs> and everyone... Yes. In the audience that's sitting around waiting for their greasy, greasy midday meal to arrive via delivery, sipping on water for eating fistful of Advils. Mm. And poutine. <laughs> and poutine. You know, I bet mm, poutine's a pretty poutine. solid hangover cure. It, it is, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> chips and gravy. It's awesome. <laughs> Deep fried yeah, cow squeeze, man. That's brilliant. So, outside of the big event, uh, it's been 10 years, man. 2000. What, what were you doing on the uh, Millennium thing, Jordan? Did, did you have like, because. Like, like in, in, in like 2000? Yeah, the, the rollover, because the world was in panic. I was barricaded inside of a bowling alley. I was <laughs> nine years old and very disappointed on January 1st mm. when like nothing exploded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of that. <laughs> That's the bear. We genuinely had like pool cues between the front doors. With it was great. It was fun. Uh, long story behind that for a different time. Anyway, let's see what's going on, uh, dude. So we had the winter sale. If you play the video games, you can't get past that. This and I had to buy something, and it was like, uh, I found like Grip Combat Racing, which is a nice little arcade racer and shooter. I yoinked it. It's a lot like Pod. If you remember Pod, that came with the original mm -hmm. 3DFX Voodoo 1 pass-through card. It's like When that. Ubisoft still made games that didn't involve towers. Kind of, man. <laughs> if that game and Trackmania had a babby, then you threw in like some of the combat from Super Tux card, you'd basically have this game. I enjoyed it. That's kind of what I did yesterday. I'm just saying there's some stuff around the house that didn't get did because of this game. And it's like currently six bucks. If couple of people pick it up. We might play some of it Friday, question mark. I'm not 100% on that. But, Pedro, you have new things. I had, uh, Well, I have the one new thing. Everything else is currently on order. And since it's coming from China, I'm not worried that it'll arrive while I'm gone. Uh, but, yeah, this one is uh, an Intel i7-5820K. It's... Um, it was uh, my Christmas gift from a co-worker, Andy. Because uh, he was like... Um, I have this processor sitting around the house. Do you want it? It's like, you're not going to use it? No. Why don't you sell it? It's like, eh, too much work. Do you want it? It's like, yes. <laughs> yes, please. Have they identified so, you as the hoarder? <laughs> Apparently, so, yes. So, so, so is, is Pedro the mirror of the NHS? <laughs> Maybe. A defunct Soviet-era space station? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's what I see I'd when I look that, at it. But I take it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> crashing, yeah, into the, cores, crashing into the and, atmosphere, uh, burning up. Just like Pedro Once the, uh, the motherboard gets here, El Chipo is going to get a significant uh, CPU upgrade and mm. everything else, but yeah. <laughs> nice. How was Toronto yeah. for the New Year's living in the big city of Canada? It was, I, I was surprised how quiet it actually was. Like Too cold? People like, F this. <laughs> I think I think people yeah stayed in stayed indoors for the most part. It was like snowing and windy. Um, I don't I don't know like the 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 street I live on has like a lot of bars and like this is where the hip youths live. Mm. Um, and by hip youths I mean like twenty somethings with like overpaid jobs. But it gets kind of rowdy uh, sometimes and surprisingly pretty pretty quiet. Oh man, you're really settling into your 30s, those kids. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been looking forward to being able to do this for like 10 years now. <laughs> Get <laughs> damn youths! This is my Get off my shine. lawn! All right. <laughs> so let's kick it off right and get right into uh, the 2019 five biggest stories from <laughs> ZDNet. Uh, Linux and open source, man. Let's do a quick overview. What do they say? Well, the big one, man, IBM had, that was a huge one this year, right? And yeah. clouds, open source, uh, XKCD comic, cloud versus open source, number three, number four. Let them fight. Clouds and Kubernetes. Clouds. <laughs> yeah, all the clouds, five. Microsoft's cool, you guys. We totally uh, freed up that X fat thing, so we're all good now, right? 
Oh well. Mm -hmm. right, right. I mean, and, that and was and one of the things that I was still iffy about, and then they released that. It's like, okay, Microsoft, you bought yourself another benefit of the well, doubt. But they, wasted. But the, <laughs> but they didn't though. They, Samsung had developed a Linux X Fat driver back in like 2011, 2012 or something like that. And Microsoft's just like, yeah, if you, yes, it's technically GPL licensed. If you release the source code, we will sue you to oblivion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, they were actively but, but, going but, after Android developers for using any kind of XFAT compatibility. They, they just wanted but, some happy uh, hush money. But yes, you know, what? <laughs> I, I, I genuinely do think that number five is a direct consequence of number four, though, because, you know, with everything being containerized these days, it's it's a pretty convenient uh, model for deploying applications. It takes a lot of guesswork out of it. Um mm -hmm. And you're going to need infrastructure to back that up. And no one's interested in paying the Microsoft licensing price. Um, they are interested in paying Microsoft rent. And that's where like Azure and whatnot comes into play, where Microsoft is now acting as a cloud provider and, you know, providing Linux distributions to run on vSwitches and yep. um, make, making it so that you can write your Linux apps in Windows and build them natively. Doing their own so Linux that... distributions and uh, GitHub. That was a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Microsoft's I, like, we'll have some of that. Then the internet I, I, lost its that, mind for about a week. <laughs> yeah. That I mean, you you still see a lot of uh, stuff uh, still on GitHub despite all that hubbub. Mm -hmm. There 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 was a fairly substantial move to uh to GitLab, but I do I do like at the beginning they're like, "Hey, by the way, before you guys freak out, we're actually hosted on Azure, so, you know, maybe <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I mean, I, I'm still enjoying trying to figure out how to use GitLab. That, that added benefit and navigate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have like three of the top five things being the cloud. It's like you you have the XKCD, there is no cloud, it's just other people's computers. And um, the kid pointing to his dad is like, uh, what are clouds made of? Linux servers, mostly. And uh, some of them are owned by Microsoft. Go figure. And and and, and then the kid <laughs> says, "What's Linux?" And Dad says, "Well, that's what we used to call System B, System D back in the day." <laughs> yes. <Right>. <laughs> okay, uh, Pedro, you're the only one here running the Buntus, so tell us about it. Yes, yes, I am. And uh, this one, I only put it here because I saw this article pop up. It's revealed the best Ubuntu release of the past ten years, and the title alone, I was like, "Oh, fluff! Check it out. It's fluff." And uh, they go down the list. It's like, yeah, we had um, uh, we asked the opinion of uh, fellow OMG Ubuntu readers, and uh, they voted that Ubuntu 1910 is the best uh, distribution of the last decade. Mm. Yes, the mm. last release of Ubuntu is the best thus far. Mm. You'd think that would go without saying, but then again, we live in a stupid timeline, so. Okay. All right. Well, I, I mean, does, does 1910 still have 32-bit? Uh, can can you get 32-bit libraries on there? Or no, was that, that uh, going to be 20-04? 31-bit. 31-bit? Yeah. That's like 32-bit. It, it still has the multi-libs there, but they are yeah, going to be moving yeah. away. 2004 only runs on trinary computers, not binary. So. <laughs> you need one of those fancy transmeta CPUs to pull it off. Dude, uh, I'm going to say, if I had to throw in my hat, it's what I run... On this box back here in the corner, Jackbox, 1804 LTS, Ubuntu is the best distro, hands down, for me anyway, because you have that sweet, sexy 10-year support, because that's the best yep. support. I mean, that hardware enables me stack. I'm like, yo, give me some of that, which really doesn't matter, because once this box was set up, the Etherdoodle was pulled out of the back, and I'm like, you're no longer connected to the internet, little buddy. Air gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can just hear, like, Strider in the background, like, screaming. <laughs> Vibrating. Um, yes. <laughs> it's like it is not really just. Yeah. If, if 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 he if he goes a little harder, uh, California might get another earthquake. Uh, Dude, <laughs> man. So we have a uh, calculation in Linux. We got a couple of Linux distributions we need to talk about. Apparently, uh, we yeah. do. And this one is a uh, calculate Linux, and it was um, well, it's not just a distribution. It's actually like three different distributions, uh, and uh, they all come together to form a bit of a platform of their own. And um, it's got a server OS that accepts Windows and Linux clients. It's got a desktop slash workstation OS for a set clients, and you have two uh, from scratch variants of the server and the client if you want that fine grain level of control. 
cool. So yeah, no longer 32 bits uh, with this version. It's based on um, Gen 2 17.1. They basically moved yeah everything to uh, the new Gen 2s. Uh, GCC 9.2, it's basically been modernized and cu- everything's caught up with the times. And if yeah. I had like an office room of my own, it's a teeny tiny apartment, so I don't, uh, but I totally set up like an entire ecosystem with a couple of laptops and a server just to see how this would work and pretty I mean, damn I mean, it looks the, nice uh, I, I like their desktop choices they have made scientific cinnamon and yeah scientific xfc dude it's mm-hmm. like xfc was science it's brilliant Man, I, I, I want some science xfc yeah um like Vin said this is all based on uh gen 2 and like i, I wouldn't I, I would still call it a distro because like there, there's not going to be any sort of binary difference between what's running on their server image versus what's running on their desktop image. But you know, providing a whole tightly integrated directory service paired with a specific desktop and server spins is an interesting direction for a distribution because, like, we 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 got like the Ubuntu server, we got the Ubuntu desktop dichotomy. But really, what this is trying to do is it's trying to pull like a like a Microsoft Windows server type environment. Um, this mm-hmm. is this is definitely definitely aimed at like professional education uses, uh, providing that sort of direct- directory service, which admittedly is probably just SSSD or um, NCSD mm. uh, running LDAP that you can just register like Windows computers to. I've, I've set I've set up that sort of heterogeneous environment. Here's before, a fair question: the- Is what? Scientific Linux still a thing? Uh, no, they, um, I thought so, yeah. yeah, they, 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 they fold, the, yeah, they've, they folded back to the scent, but scientific Linux was just like a scent respin anyways. Mm-hmm. But, um, I, I think, I think that move was basically red hat said, Hey, we're, we're just going to start bringing CentOS under our wing and the scientific Linux guys were like, well, you know, if it's getting red hat support, then we don't need to put together, put forward the effort. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So the, it, it, it's interesting to see sort of, uh, Linux distributions aim at this I would say kind of untargeted space because uh, for the most part, like if you're working in an office environment, you're using a Mac tied to an LDAP server, you're using Windows tied to an Active Directory server. It's it's nice to see that like someone's trying to provide like a prepackaged alternative that's theoretically works out of the box. That's pretty sweet, man. Uh, so you OS. Oh boy! Oh uh-huh. boy! <laughs> this one's gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another Chinese computer operating system. Will UOS succeed, man? Uh, I threw this in simply because China moving away from Windows has me interested. I mean, it just does, man. And they're going to start uh, playing around with UOS. It's the new product, Unified Operating System, if you're wondering what it means. And it is, what is it, based on Deepin, deep right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. So... Uh, kind of interesting to see some weight throw behind this simply because it's a mass China's a massive market. We all know that. And you got to think of how it would shake things up if they were to have a push towards Linux as opposed to yeah. Windows, right? That, 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 that would definitely have some implications for the uh, other show, What For We Done Do. Um, yes, on accounts of the video games. <laughs> yes. Well, on all software as a whole, because if you want to have a um, market in there in any way, shape, form, or fashion, you know, you'd have to be on Linux. And one of the things with China is, you know, if the government's like, yo, we're, we're running Linux now, uh, you're pretty much running Linux now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I, I, I still, I still think it would take, uh, like a couple of years for the rest of the world to catch up to a move like that. Also like cons- consider no one really like ships desktop software anymore. It's all web apps. It's all cloud-based. They're trying to uh, subs. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, 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 especially in China where they have like very restrictive policies on what can or cannot escape their great firewall. Um, what about Russia, man? Russia was like, yo, it oh, yeah, to they, be they, they, Russian. <laughs> They, they they successfully tested like cutting off from like the rest of the internet and have like having like a fully functional uh, like I don't want to say intranet because that's technically the wrong term mm. but yes um, but internal um, widespread network yeah. it's like it's like the uh, Kwangmyong in uh, North Korea um, yeah all I can say to any of that is uh, all of that nonsense goes to poo the second uh, space internet lights up which is going to start beta testing mid to late. Of 2020 this year yeah uh yeah. but like to, to going going back to your point then um like readily available domestically produced linux pcs will definitely help adoption in china 
Because, like, we, we, we've basically come to the conclusion that most people don't actually care what their computer is running. Mm -hmm. Um... Mm -hmm. Going through the process As, of like installing another operating system people are not is do that. a pain for most people. They're they're not yeah. going to go through it if it just like look at look at Chromebooks, right? If it ships, if it gives them the majority of the functionality that they require, most people will happily sit back and learn the new thing, or they'll yeah they'll and grow and as a distribution. Loan. Well, I, I yeah. think Deep most distribution does a very good job of that. They it's do. like all the UI, UX, it's all there. For the average person, overgeneralizing only slightly is the only thing you need to do to be like really well set as a distribution is make it easy to launch the web browser because that's yeah. the program. Mm -hmm. Most people like, yeah, that's my program. That's how I get to there. The there are a lot of internet cafes in China where people play video games, though. Mm -hmm. Um the 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 uh so that that that's definitely a concern. The other thing I was thinking of, and this this is this is like some crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy Ooh. stuff. But so remember remember back in the early nineties when there was like munitions export restri restrictions on like encryption, PS2 right? And stuff like that. Encryption, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Where they they literally like made a book describing how to implement GPG, and they're like, all right, it's not digital anymore. You can just oh, go. Oh, right. It. They print. They had to print it out and scan it. OCR the thing back in. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But like, so the. The thing, the thing about open source technology is that, you know, everyone contributes to it, everyone consumes it. But we live in a very, very weird point in time where, like, cyber warfare is a thing. And I'm generally, I'm genuinely curious to see, like, if open source software will become sort of a new front of that, where the Americans are trying to slip in code that will screw over the Chinese and vice versa, and it just becomes that whole thing. I... I, I don't I don't know. It's it's definitely within the realm of possibility for sure. It's a hundred percent, and that's why I'm going back to running Open Solaris. Oh yeah, just just run, <laughs> just, just run Dragonfly BSD. <laughs> and you had that interview with Linus that he was asked, "Is like, has anyone ever contacted you to um, ask you to put in stuff on the down low?" And he was like, "No." Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's um, you know I, I I love a good conspiracy and uh, I think I'm paranoid enough to stay alive. But I honestly don't know how I'd feel about it. like with Mac OS, especially once because you can be almost certainly guaranteed that's backdoored in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Oh, okay. yeah. You just you just have to accept that to run that. There's no like yeah maybe yeah. But mm. and and like you 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 can make the argument that oh you know what it's open source people are um. People are looking at the code, but you uh, there's a, there's a paper by Dennis Ritchie called "On Trusting Trust" that basically says like yeah even if you read the code if you know how the co if you know what the compiler does then you can make the compiler just do stuff by like providing very specific code yeah. and and there's not one person who has all of that stack in their head man Ex so. exactly yeah. so <laughs> like 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 I, like I said it it has some interesting implications maybe it's just paranoid conspiracy theory maybe it's not. Nation states are weird, and they will go through go to extreme lengths to ensure their own propagation. So that's right. Yep. And the moon's flat. Um, easy Wi-Fi. Moon's triangle, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, uh, easy Wi-Fi is that tool for when you find yourself stuck um, without uh, being able to plug in, say, a brand new laptop that doesn't have a um, um, RJ45 Ethernet port at the at the back, but. You do have some Wi-Fi's, but you're going to have to go through the rigmarole of setting up Wi-Fi's through the command line. And I've done that, I'm guessing everyone here has done that at some point, but it's not easy to remember. And you often find yourself craving for some Google uh, to help you actually get it done. However, with easy Wi-Fi Pi, which is because uh, it's built in Python, uh, you can find it on GitHub. It um, well, that aims to solve this. It's basically a little Python script that gives you a menu. It can scan for networks, list of devices, list of saved networks, connect to a saved network, connect to a new network, set up a hotspot, uh, take down the hotspot. Yeah, it it does exactly what you'd expect a Wi-Fi uh, network connection manager type of situation to do. And it yeah. does so very easily, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and and MCLI isn't actually that bad to use, especially now that like 
at, le at least in Fedora, it has the bash auto completion stuff, so you can just tab your way to success. Yeah. Um, but I mean, no, no, is right. Remembering a whole specific set of syntax for like the one thing you have to do once when you set up your mm -hmm. computer's opinion. Yeah. So I mean, mm -hmm. the, like if you if you actually look at the source code here, it literally just wraps around um, an MCLI anyways, and mm -hmm. just provides a handy dandy menu driven interface. Which I mean, it's I have I have, I have nothing against it. It's, Dude, it's a that, utility that and people like, need it. That saves time. Yeah. And yes, it, that, it's that a menu. You just hit a like, button, done. <laughs> especially on a laptop. Uh, I'd like to see that shipped with distros just to keep me out of the man page because that is that one thing of like, oh, no. Um, hmm, what do I do? Oh, having a menu. Like, ooh, neat. Boop, boop, boop. Internet. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Big Which is uh, and that, that's yourself, Python, though. right? <laughs> well, it'd be handy with my new Razer laptop. Well, yes. If you have a Razer laptop, you probably have other concerns, not just a Wi-Fi. Uh, namely, like setting up uh, fan profiles or setting up the firmware uh, power profile, which is not available or not um, exposed by default by the Linux kernel. So you may need a bit of an extra driver. And there was already uh, Open Razer, which... Uh, it does a very similar thing, but the creator of this one, which is called R Razer Laptop Control, easily enough, uh, didn't feel like modifying the open Razer driver, so he built another one. XKCD927. Uh, the, uh, this one, uh, what it does right now is just it lets you access the power profiles and you can set them uh, from the firmware so you can have the like energy saving if you're working off of the AC, and you can set up the high-end turbo power thing uh, if you're doing some gaming some gaming while plugged into the uh, the power. No, that's great. That's yep. what I call library mode. That's when you have the library and the person yes. next to you is annoying, <laughs> so you just cut that on and you're like, <laughs> you like that? All right. And that's the other one, uh, the fan profile. You can actually set a fan profile um, to not, you know, go from just the three default uh, ones that Linux does, which is off 50% and 100%. Uh, you can actually set a bit of a ramp. Uh, but yeah, it it exposes those and lets uh, people have access to those. Just a really nice little driver. Hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I mean, it's good for something like that to exist because you know somebody out there right now is Googling that because they just got a laptop and they're like, uh, how do I shut this thing? Yeah. <laughs> I can't oh, make my fan thing turn needs... on. Linux is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you what thing up, it like, needs is the RGB control for the keyboard. No, no, they don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember I... your adventures when you first got that AMD laptop, Jordan. You're like, well, touchscreen works. Housepad <laughs> okay. doesn't. <laughs> now, all right, all right. To 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 my credit, there that the the BIOS that the T or the A four thirty five ships with was hot garbage, and it took him about four revisions for Bluetooth to like actually be exposed, mm. and that you so that you wouldn't, and also so that you wouldn't have to boot with specific features turned off mm. uh, on the kernel CLI. But again, that's not that's not Linux's fault. Mm. Um, this this is one of those things where like the BIOS like implemented the standard incorrectly. And mm -hmm. Linux is just like, hey, I'm looking at this thing that, like, you know, the standard tells me to look at, and it's not there. So what do you want me to do? Blam. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So Comga is not Conga? No. Com Comga. Mm. Comga. So, yeah. so, the, 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 so this, one, this one's actually kind of neat uh, and speaks to me personally as someone with a fairly substantial digital comics collection. Uh, it is a open source comic slash manga, mango server. Um, oh, no, it, there's going to be tentacles or anything. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the tentacles no, the are optional. are pretty safe. <laughs> you, 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 you need to provide your own tentacles for use with Comga. <laughs> no, but it can, it can uh, read in uh, CBZ, CBR formats, which are really just, you know, zip and rar files and PDFs and serve out individual pages. It can re, it can uh, re-encode the images uh, to match your bandwidth. It has a nice little web UI. So if you want to just browse through your comics, you can. The other handy dandy thing is that it integrates with a bunch of comic reader uh, Android apps, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, like I said, I, like I, I buy uh, comics off of like the humble uh, comic bundles, um, there's a lot of like uh, DRM free comics out there, um, mm -hmm. and 
uh, uh, CB, CBR, CBZ has kind of been like the um, standard digital comics format uh, if you're not going through something like Comixology. Uh, so this is for if you, there's not some anything on com Comixology that you want to read, you can spin your own. It's nice. Um, I'm probably going to actually set it up uh, pretty soon because this would be pretty yeah. handy to have all my comics centralized. Then I can just point an app at a URL. Will this work like, yeah. with my um, eBooks and stuff? Because I have an entire Chuck Tingle collection. Uh, if they're, if they, <laughs> Thanks, if Humble. They're PDF, if they're PDF, yes. Okay. Yes, they are because Humble. <laughs> so will it work like, I, when I think about something like this, I'm unfamiliar with the um, digital setups with comics and stuff like that. Will it work a lot like Plex does? Does it go out and fetch like um, information, or is all that provided inside the uh, PDF itself? Is it um, that should be so, provided by the file, ideally? Not mm. necessarily. Um, although, although you can make some inferences, like the first page of the of the book would be the cover, so you could use that as mm -hmm. the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, like uh, the the actual files themselves are literally just like zip and RAR files. Um, uh, if, uh, like not no well not PDFs because they're obviously PDFs but the C yeah but the CBRs and the CBZs and the but this would give but you yeah, like a no, decent it is pretty interface deep. yeah yeah like it, a tablet but, but, or anything like that yeah uh, uh, you, you you need a separate app but like the the, the Plex you don't analogy need is an pretty good separate app it's got its well, own it, web it, interface it, 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 yeah. it is a browser <laughs> one yes but to my point yes the Plex analogy holds it is basically yes. Plex for comics. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the actually looking at the little table that they have with the compatibility for the apps, apparently um, a lot of them aren't using the um, OPDS protocol as it should be. Like, they're not implementing it completely. So you have, like, FB Reader, which you can't do the CBRs and CBZs, only PDFs, and it doesn't remember the password. Uh, with Moon Reader, you can't download files at all, and you, it doesn't remember your password either. Um, Librera seems to be the only one that does uh, everything from the um, OPDS protocol, but it doesn't support open search and it doesn't support uh, page streaming. So if you have, because one of the things that this can do is stream per page um, and re-encode them on the fly, depending on, as Jordan mentioned, uh, your... Um, your connection, connection and how well it's holding up and yeah the only one that can do that is an ios one the chunky comic reader and that's so a, a very interesting feature if you say you're on your phone and you're trying to go over some very slow lts that could, could be very useful so i might just have to uh, set up a little box and i can tinkle all the way yes <laughs> <laughs> cool beans man uh but not just visual we have some audio love in the Linux yes, um, if you if you are one of the people who do the majority of your audio audiobook listening on your computer for whatever reason and not have it on like a phone or something <laughs> that you can take on the go because I don't, I don't know most people I find don't sit down and listen to audiobooks they're listening to them at work or in the car or on the subway um, and not while they're sitting typing away and if they are they usually like listening to it on their phone but um, this will. Uh, this has the standard suite of audiobook player features that you want, like uh, color uh, cover gallery. It'll uh, you can do playback speed control. You can um, you can, it'll remember your position, so you can set bookmarks. Uh, they have a flat pack, which is nice. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was actually I was actually a little sad they don't have an Android version because again, like if I were gonna, if, I'm not a big ebook listener. If I were going to listen to ebooks though, I'd probably put it on my phone and like listen to it at the gym. Um, hmm. But. It uses mess and the build, so I don't see the requirement yeah. to do a pip install bonus. I mean, um. it, 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 it's all it's all done in Python, anyways. So yeah, I I'm suppose you that. could do a pip install, but again, there's the flat pack as well, so you can just use that. Hmm. Uh, audiobooks, man. I don't know where I land on that. Um, some people, some people just don't like reading. That's <laughs> I don't mind reading actually. I I I'm really not the target um, audience for audiobooks. I, mean, I think but we've like, had that like, conversation. Like the only things I read now are to gain information, and I found that I can't search through audiobooks as handily mm -hmm. as Control F. <laughs> yeah, you, you you can't grab give you me can't that grab, PDF uh, wave files. <laughs> um, but like yeah, like um, the people I know who listen to audiobooks usually have like multiple hour commutes to to and from work. Or like mm -hmm. it, it, it's that thing where there's there's a reason we put out the four hour version of Linux Gamecast is because you know some people need like four background hours noise. of people right. of yeah background yeah. noise <laughs> while they're while they're out and about doing their stuff so yeah. indeed 
So speaking of background noise, I want to help everyone make better background noise at home if you're doing your own thing. And one of the ways you can do that is by making your audio nice and level. Dylan what? is here. What? <laughs> huh? you Boss, that's honey. Here's a hot series that I'm putting together for uh, Linux Gamecast. It's called Podcasting on Linux because I'm original and I name stuff well. Uh, one of the better first things me. I'm walking you through <laughs> is getting level. It's the equivalent, if you're familiar with Windows, it's something called Levelator. But this is a level speech plugin. It's an iQuest plugin for Audacity. I'll show you how to get that installed, set up basic usage, and it will make everything nice and good. Because as I explained in the video, available at LinuxGameCast.com, shameless plug, is like when we first started doing this, it was just me and Jordan. And once I figured out how to do channel separation, that was a winnable fight most of the time. Because, you know, this is a long time ago. Then we added Pedro, then you have three people, then you're mixing that down to stereo, and you can never get everyone just right. Now we have these, like, sparkly cowboy boots, lacquerty hairdo, <laughs> digital mixing with, like, real-time noise cancellation and digital gating and compression. But this trick will let you do it after the fact. What we're going to get to is... um I want to show you how to do it while the engine's still running. That, that's the fun thing. Doing it live in real time with almost no latency so you can still have a conversation between everyone. So a couple of more of those are planned, guaranteed. Uh, that's something I'm going to be doing in 2020. There's actually one out right now uh, for Patreons. Uh, when I release one, that means another one's in the hopper. It's ready to go. And that is something that drove... You poor, poor, beautiful, brave souls that have listened to our live stream crazy for the longest time was tracking down and eliminating like USB hum, signal hum, like and stuff like that. The causes, the sources and cheap, real solutions to fixing that problem, because there is some moon magic on YouTube, man. People are like, make sure you rub the frozen spaghetti on the left side. Of the power <laughs> supply. Yeah, yeah, you got to apply the sacred unguents and like sacrifice the chickens. And... It, frighteningly approaching that level, what I'm going to do is like two things under 20 bucks that will get you sorted. And like three things that are way over 20 bucks that won't do anything. So that video uh, is currently available on patreon.com. If you're a patron, thank you. You support our nonsense. It's brilliant. And if you're not, just be patient because uh, the next video I'm working on, when that goes up on Patreon, that one's going to come out because we don't do permanent paywalls. We're not dicks. All right. Yep. So <laughs> let's quit talking about stupid audio stuff that only Vin cares about. No, I'm just kidding, man. I got another thing for you. <laughs> um, DMGsound.com. Everything's going to be in our show notes. Link in the descriptions. This will help you sort luffs. If you don't know what luffs are, you're what not doing luff? a podcast, man. Uh, it is just a loudness scale. It gauges, you know, if you're doing any type of broadcasting, and that's, uh, there's the integrated loudness, um, you as you like to call it. So, uh, but Apple for like podcasts, it's overall loudness, man. They want it to be about negative 16. And most meters will call this integrated loudness. And because you're like, well, what about dBs? dBs is a horrible way to gauge overall loudness. It's a, a no, just don't use it. Um, our shows, uh, we do about uh, minus 15.30. I'm like that. That's how I like things. This will help you. This is a good rough guesstimation. I threw it in the notes because you can try it. See what your show's at. Uh, if you're doing a podcast or anything like that, it's reasonably accurate. And, you know, if you don't want to set up a DAW, like uh, a door or like buy a plug-in to do it. So go check that out. Be awesome. Yay. I, I, I did try I, I, that. I, I, I uploaded I, 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 like two different MP3 files and it came out to around minus nine, minus 10 um, on the luffs. That's way I, too loud. I, I have a question though. What is, what is the recommended <laughs> what, what is the recommended luffs if you're man of war? Purple. <laughs> Just like what a slice a of purple, <laughs> purple pie. Oh, hang on. Pie. Uh, quick plugs, right quick. Uh, Shuck and Jive, chill. Uh, we did a, did you watch the Star Wars? Do you love the Star Wars? Well, we spoiled the all out of the Star Wars. It was about 15 to 20 minutes. The three of us, last week, we did a record. That's up for patrons. Uh, if you want to 
see our thoughts on that nonsense. Speaking of that, that's how we're financed. All of you beautiful people, keep being awesome. You make this show possible. We don't do ads. We don't have commercials. We're not tracking you or anything like that. If you got four extra quarters each and every week, that'd be brilliant. Um, that gives us a budget. That's going to be all of our project money for 2020. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, outside of the Star Wars spoilers, I got some stuff. I'm going to be coming up more on that at 11, but definitely keep being awesome. Jordan, we we got a couple of things you can do, like access to our show notes, pre-pre super shows, and... What else do we have to sweeten the pot? Yeah, you can RSVP to game streams. Yep. I do multiplayer streams. Ven does multiplayer streams. If you want to play some games with us, yep. you can absolutely do that. Uh, show note access is pretty good because you can... Um, Tell us we're you wrong can before you, we... <laughs> Yeah, you can yell at us before we even like get to say the thing out loud. Um, you can even suggest stories. Our Theron likes to do that quite a bit. Uh, so if you have a cool thing that you want to signal boost, being a Patreon is a great way to do awesome. that in our face. Also, if you want to get in touch with us, you can just message us on Patreon and we will get back to you ASAP. Yeah, basically, short and long of it, we loves it. It's kind of brilliant, and uh, it's better than mattress ads. I like to say, but then again, <laughs> not, not 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 quite as good as t-shirt ads. Then again, Microsoft, call me. I'd love to do a Microsoft ad. It just yeah. uh, burn them. <laughs> yeah, Internet Explorer twelve. Yes. Uh, it's actually called Edge. Internet Explorer twelve. Yes, I E twelve. <laughs> Shut up, Clippy. I'm trying to do an ad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we we also got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy a, you yes, can buy right. shirts for uh, this show. You can buy shirts for the other show. Stickers. Speaking of shirts, man, uh, Hail Santa is gone. <gasps> you just until, until, until next year. Until after oh, he the festivities from the, are over, right? <laughs> when, when, once, once he emerges from the center of the earth to the North Pole to spread chaos and coal to. People. Well, hey, man, if, if you're one of those people, it's like, oh, it's no longer, oh, it's more collectible now. Yeah, it is. It's worth like just, 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 three just, 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 just like that first run of garbage LGC mugs. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're collector's the items. Dude, yep. uh, we do have wish list. Uh, Jordan, you recently got a butter infuser. That was got a I did. delicious. Pedro, you got some tiles. That's kind of brilliant. Yes, I got tiles and I got a chair, which is nice. I think people just want to make me cozy here. Thank you. Uh, I got this thing. I think left and right. That's pretty sweet. Mike got us the uh, new uh, f wall. You end up on that. If you get anything for the studio, we have uh, 2.0, which is hanging on the wall. I got to get some pictures of that. That's framed. That will always be part of our studios. That's the wrong button, too. Uh, yeah. Now, let's do the slice of pie. We're done with the shameless self-promotion. And yeah. it is in cast iron blueberry pie. That almost doesn't look horrific, but it still looks too sweet for me. The crust yeah, looks Depending on the amount of sugar, it could be nice. Uh, but no, the first one is the cheese board. And uh, yeah, it was uh, set up that technically there's a raspberry pie in there somewhere, but it's literally a robot with a suction cup that grabs a, um, <laughs> a slice of uh, bread and then grabs a slice of cheese, another slice of bread, and then it rolls over to the... Um, the press um and right ryan c gordon is horrified sandwich. right now mm. yeah there's a definite like a mayo where does it uh, put the but... mayo on yeah that's what i'm looking for <laughs> it doesn't it needs a mayo uh, like something with a mayo jar dude, just, dude, it, 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 it needs no, like no. a mayo squeezer to just go like <laughs> it, it needs that ketchup <laughs> pot flipped out and just, yeah, yeah exactly. but yeah it uh it works and uh yeah, there's a technically there's a raspberry pie in there somewhere this, this, to this uh, run the right, brains. <laughs> right, sh go away, you there. That where where we have the uh, plexiglass well, sliding. That yeah, fork, all, yeah. All I can do. Mm -hmm. This is right before the griddle comes down. All I can do is smell that when it cocks up. Oh, oh yeah, it's going you, to you, 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 some 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 grilled plastic cheese. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, if I I, I can I. I mean, this is just like a, I guess oh, it's yeah. like a fun project. This like, okay, fun. Google, make me, a, make me a grilled cheese sandwich. Right. I don't know. It takes me like five minutes to make a grilled cheese sandwich. So I don't, I don't, I don't it's know. a cheese Borg. <laughs> I cheese guess they Borg. just wanted to do it for the name. <laughs> Robot de fromage. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, full of country goodness in green pine ass. As uh, someone with a bag of drives. <laughs> yes. As, as if, if if you if you missed before before we we started recording this, I literally have like a burlap sack full of hard drives. <laughs> that um, it, it's it's a bit chunky. And you know if you, if if you have a bunch of spare hard drives and you got a Raspberry Pi, and you want to be like, hey, I want to serve some files out on the network. Uh, this PC Mag article will show you how. 
Um, it basically just involves um, setting up Samba and exporting a external USB hard drive via your Raspberry Pi. Pretty simple so to set up. <laughs> I, I kind of I kind of groaned when I read through this at first, but that's because I've read so many articles on how to set up Samba mm -hmm. that like this is mm -hmm. just like article number three thousand. But you know what? If you're if you're googling and you're looking for a way to set this up in a pinch, and you don't feel like setting up free NAS or anything, um, yeah, you can set it up with uh, Raspbian. It'll um, it'll serve out your Samba thing, so you can connect it with your Androids. It, every everything supports Samba these days, so it's handy to know um although i i will say if i was gonna go for like a pie style nas build i'd really be eyeing one of those rock pies with the sata hat oh you want one of those beefy boys yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> to be fair that one we talked about um on lwdw a couple of weeks ago that had the like the, yeah, the big sun. chunky uh, metal case if yeah. it was if it weren't for the fact that there was no way for the heat to dissipate out the top that's not a bad idea I, I mean, that's if you really use, not if you, a bad idea. The, the thing takes laptop drives anyways. Mm -hmm. They don't generate a lot of yeah. heat. Or yeah. you can buy a lot of like cheapo solid state drives for pretty dirt cheap too. You them. can, but one of the things like definitely when you start going towards one of the top end rock pies, you start immediately getting into one fifty plus territory just for the board, much less yeah. the hats. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say you know I I like you know this article is geared towards like right from the go it's like so you think about building an ass well before you do that little buddy why don't why don't we take a babby step two and play mm -hmm. around with maybe some of the hardware that you have laying around the house because for me there's absolutely genuinely nothing quite like building an ass you know you, you get to go through like picking the right motherboard and, and like just the right next to oh, like dual port quad and how oh no, yeah this is going to be sweet then you're going to figure out what type of raid what flavor of raid you're going to sprinkle over the platters or the ssds <laughs> and saying f that noise and going out and buying a drobo because that's a true story ladies and gentlemen um <laughs> i'm so like I, I i don't know i've i've worked with those um and th this is 100 percent like a personal experience thing where like I worked at a company that used one of those like personal grade like Drobo things as yeah. like the office NAS. Yeah, Synology and, NAS or a yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and after afterwards, I was like, never again, never again. <laughs> it depends on what you expect, man. Yeah, because it, 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 I, it depends on what you expect, and it depends on what you want to do for sure. Franken NAS is a Drobo, and Zath NAS is old Synology. It's a six drive, but they're just there for. Like, it's not even, like, anything critical backed up to. I wouldn't put anything critical. I just feed them drives when the light changes and hope everything's on it. Mm -hmm. Because then again, what did I do to set it up? I cut it on. Yeah. Logged into the web <laughs> interface. Installed Plex. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, look, we're done. <laughs> Installed, what do you mean? Yeah, you just click the button to install the Plex on it. You're done. Yeah, so some of these have app stores. <laughs> yeah. That, like, yeah. But building it your own, you learn stuff. Um and do that play with it it's good to know yeah. how things work instead of just like something always done for you you know yeah, yeah um <laughs> you know you know developing some nuanced understanding as opposed to just it's a magical wand i plug my drives in and all of a sudden i have magic raid over well, wi-fi <laughs> it definitely raid. cuts down on the uh <laughs> well there's two ways of thinking about it when you, when you really do there's like oh thing broke magic thing broke have to replace versus thing broke oh great now i can take it apart um, <laughs> or, <laughs> oh, thing broke. I know exactly what went wrong. Doop, 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 well, doop, there's doop. that and something my mom told me when I was a child. She's like, there's no such thing as more broke. Which I have proven wrong on multiple <laughs> that, that, occasions. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is a false statement. Your mom is lying yeah, to you. Yeah, I know what she meant, but that, mm, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, maybe if, if, you if, like if, breaking stuff too. You want to tell us how you do it. Maybe we got something right, got something wrong. I'm going to share your thoughts, hints, opinions, allegations. How can they do that, Pedro Mateus? They can do that by going to linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. It's pretty easy, pretty self explanatory. Just make sure you read the warnings at the top, see if they. Uh, fit with what you're trying to send us if they don't cool just leave us your message and make sure you pick lwdw as the um little show that you want to send the feedback to otherwise you can also ask jordan for relationship advice or send some hate mail for that saturday show or what we do it's all there just it again pretty self-explanatory mm -hmm. if you've ever used a contact form in your life yeah <laughs> 
Coming up first this week from Ayrton. Let me slide that over. See, look, there's people behind there, including us. We'll put ourselves behind There's right no there. one behind the curtain, <laughs> no. Ben. We were talking about uh, animation software last week, and I kind of mentioned OpenTunes. And uh, Ayrton writes basically regarding the segment on Envy. What, Envy. What, yeah, that's what we settled on. <laughs> Thank you for the mention of OpenTunes, if I recall correctly. It was at a convention months ago where professional animators were showing some animations from their show via OpenTunes. Yeah, Jill had mentioned that. Nice. That is uh, <laughs> definitely used as like a viable thing, especially for smaller animation studios and stuff like that. Well, and it's well, well, what was the one that uh, Studio Ghibli open sourced? OpenTunes. Wait, no, it wasn't oh, OpenTunes. Yeah, that's the one. Wait, that <laughs> that was exactly ah, the yes. one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was like, I, I, I thought for a second, is that the one that Ghibli open sourced? Yeah. I don't remember. Dude, I, I, I just like Schrodinger's kitty on that one i'm like yes and no you're gonna be maybe. right yeah right <laughs> maybe <Possibly>. no <laughs> yes all right jordan it's christmas time it's ho ho hoes okay yeah um this is from from michael g proprietor of basically everything you see behind us all of us <laughs> Um, and he says, I didn't know if you were going to do an Xma show, but I'm glad you did. You're consistently one of the best advocates of Linux and Linux gaming out there right now. I'm happy to be among the many folks that support you. Looking forward to many more episodes. Mike, what, why, why you gotta be so mean? That's like, mm -hmm. that is unnecessarily <laughs> cruel. What the hell? We've been getting a lot of like this, uh vitriol like we even had some last week uh, on saturday i wonder show. what i'm, we I'm gonna go to cry after the show people Ow. to this level <laughs> personally a, i blame jill just because she's not here to defend herself being accused so. of competence <laughs> is something we do not take well <laughs> nay Thanks for kids though. all right last and not least pedro Last uh, is uh, Rocco. It's like, Ven, I love this. He's talking about Ven's video. I am definitely looking forward to more tutorials. Which one? The one with the heels or the one with the gummy worms? The one... I thought, I thought that, I thought that I was the same video. I don't know if you were wearing heels in that one, but it's the uh, leveling audio one. <laughs> Did you see me stumble uh, and take down these two monitors? <laughs> uh, so that, 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 that was your one-man Rocky Horror show. Right, right, gotcha. right. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to more tutorials, especially in any other post-processing effects like compressors, EQ, and noise reduction, and what settings you use for those. Thanks again. Rocco. That well, was for the video that we did for Lovely. Yeah, there's more yes. coming, man. And yeah, that, that's uh, Rocco from Big Daddy Linux? Modern Life, yeah. Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Rocco! Uh -huh. Rocco no. is modern. <laughs> I, I mean, he's, he's, he's Australian, but he lives in America, yeah. right? Sure. Con that, Conglomo, we own you. We're going to fill this backstory <laughs> in for our new uh, protagonist. Uh, He's a wallaby. Dude. <laughs> Definitely going to be doing that again in 2020. And we're, we're going to take everything. Uh, one of the things I got to do, I got I to buy a thing before I can uh, get another thing, which is going to be a camera that I can like not have an HDMI cable hanging out of the back of and that don't doesn't require a tripod. To film some stuff because I want to show everybody how to how our mix minus system works, how our old mix minus system works, and eventually I'm probably going to have to like send Jordan I don't know a hockey stick gold plated or something to get him to uh, do some video of how his setup works. Same thing with Pedro. So look forward to that. Then I'm going to show you some of the nightmare that is audio over IP that we have working, and it's kind of brilliant. It's super sexy and it's slick. It's using it's using Jitsi, right? VoIP. Uh, no, I'm talking about our audio over IP system just here in the studio, baby. Yeah, uh, using the Jitsi, Jackbox right? audio. <laughs> Jackbox doesn't use Jitsi. It uses Pulse. I thought he uses OSS. Brains, beautiful people. We got to get out of here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're not listening to us uh, with a massive crushing dehydrated hangover but if you want that would be really bad especially <laughs> see this is a good thing about real-time compression you didn't hurt anyone jordan you didn't damn it damn you technology we're gonna roll some credits and get out of here but we do love you and we will see you next week i won't oh Bye. yeah Wub. 
Ah, oh, I was hoping for Joel's name to show up. Damn. Sucker. <laughs> Damn it! Gotcha. Damn you and you having your stuff together. <laughs> Goddamn professionals. I got old and I didn't get smashed drunk last night, so I was like, yes, I remember to do a thing. Boo! Boo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, 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 look at all these people helping us out. These lovely, get... lovely psychopaths. They're so great. Tis the reason for the season. I, re I really three. hope they don't get eaten by Demogorgons, because then their credit cards won't <laughs> continue to be charged. For, like, after the second one. <laughs> I hate you, Brad. <laughs>